Fine, Kendall. Fine, Kendall, get up. Good, PK. Finish. He never pulled this off. GoPro is like a year and a half old. I wanted to pull it off. I didn't know we could. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't know and I could. Can you see it now? It's gonna be so. I thought cool. he. I thought he didn't know. All right, hey, ladies, tune in. Okay, hey, super proud of you. Super proud of you. So we talked about how we felt we were deeper than they were. We had six kids go on and start a half and then six fresh kids come on when they had one kid maybe that's how we can wear them down and we took control of the game they're a great team they took it to us and we absorbed the pressure early on how many quality chances did they have one one alex made a beautiful alex. save oh yeah. 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 yeah fantastic save and we're gonna talk and Trippy knows they yelled out, out out at her at that point, and Sienna wound up and cleared the ball two yards, and then all of a sudden they got a shot off. But that's what your teammates do. You're not as sharp as you can, your teammates step up for you. And you were there to step up for her in other, in other situations. But again, we weren't far away from them last year. I told you, we're a better team this year. We're a better team. And you showed it. You showed it. Defended well on their set pieces, and theirs are dangerous. Dangerous better organized, better heart, better desire, all around the field. True team effort, even with yellow shorts running around there. Yellow socks <laughs> running around there. Nice flick header, shot on goal, what? <laughs> okay, true team effort today, really proud of you. And they got it out, they had to gut it out. A lot of tired legs. But that's a national semifinalist last year. You just proved that you're there. Right? You can compete with teams like that. We gotta roll into Indiana and continue to get better. Told you kids will get moved around, especially as we get into Indiana. As a coach, I've gotta try different things. Poor Hebe was thrown out in a position that she knew about 30 minutes before the game started. Right? That might try to give you more of a heads up, but sometimes the universe just speaks to me and we gotta do things weird. Okay? <laughs> that is just what happens sometimes. All right, but going into Indiana, we'll be moving kids around. Kids playing different positions. Increase and develop our versatility and our ability to put players in different positions at different times. Not only for this season, but for your own future down the road. It's important. But it also highlights that when I'm talking to Ainsley about right back in practice, Bean better be listening because she might be back there. When I'm talking to PK about playing a forward, hey babe, better be listening, because she was there. Right, same thing, same thing. The only thing I'm gonna say, that while it's fresh in our minds, when we're trying to kill the game, the ball goes where? Corners. To the corners. We don't win the ball and give them the ball back right away. Time is our friend. Time's on our side. We want them to go 120 yard star goal. Not take a shot from 30 and let them punt it to our 50. You understand? It's the game changes when we're in the kill mode. The game changes. We're not trying to score. We look at me. We don't need to score. We need to finish the game. Okay? And their panic and their pressure and them pushing players forward opens up our counterattack. Great cushion goal that we got from PK. Great, great goal to give us a little bit of a cushion and end the game. Just telling you all this while it's fresh. And we'll continue to work on it. Okay? Proud of you. Great battle. Proud of you. Hands in, team on three. We'll get going, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Team! It's 4.30 on Saturday. I uh, had some stuff to do after our game, but trying to get some, uh, to find some time to just document a little bit of uh, what happened today. 
As expected, super difficult, super challenging game for us. If you're Eclipse, it's hard to beat the same team over and over again, as long as there's that team is comparable or close to being comparable. But on the other side, for us, it's they, they're in our heads. They beat us twice. We have not beat them ever. So we can sometimes be in our own heads about that. Yeah, and we were. The first uh, first 10 minutes, they're all over us. We look panicked, couldn't keep the ball, and had to absorb a lot of a lot of pressure. We'd panic because we're defending so much, we get the ball, we'd kick it, we'd give the ball away, we'd have to defend again. Um, it's a vicious cycle like that. To the girls' credit, they settled down then. The first group that, that I started on the field um, settled in and, and, and started to push back and give us some, give us some belief. The plan was going into the game, I just felt our depth would help us and would see us through. And that's really what happened. Midway through the first half, we changed six field players. They might have changed one or two over the course of the entire half. And you could really start to feel the game change a little bit and, and, and shift in our favor. Ended the half 0 0. No, no real threats. I take that back. We created at least one really good chance when Ainsley played a played a through ball, um, and Liv was on the diagonal run toward the near post. The keeper came out, and Liv tried to lob or volley it over the keeper, hit the side netting. I'm trying to remember offhand if we had any other clear chances. I'll have to look back at the tape. But zero zero at halftime. Um, talk to the girls. Uh, I don't need to tell you what I talked about. You're going to see. I will say that I did make a decision that if we won the toss, we'd go into the win first. Um, we ended up, whether we won the toss or Eclipse won and chose the ball, I'm not sure, but ended up, we went into the win the first half. So again, got to halftime 0-0. Started the same way in the second half that we started in the first half. Subbed the forward line. Um, what, 18 minutes in maybe, 19 minutes in. Made the last three changes in the midfield and outside back, two minutes later. And just took it to them, just pressed. One set pieces, one corner kicks. Had a really good corner, corner kick served in by Ainsley. And I'll have to look at the video again, but big scrum in front of the net and ball clearly clearly to the ref, crossed the line, was kicked out, and uh, we were awarded a goal. Pick us up 1-0. Uh, and then just tough for me and tough for any Good parent money, to see. Love that money. Uh, just a challenge at the top of the Eclipse box and Liv goes down. And she's a tough kid. She has a fairly high pain threshold. So when she's days down, I know something's not right. Yeah, yeah, tough. It's tough. All right, battery died. Lost my train of thought. May repeat a couple things, but so Liv was done for the rest of the game, which, I don't know, maybe there was 10 minutes left, 12 minutes left, something like that. The UCNL has a no entry rule per half, and uh, so we had to put Reese on, our goalkeeper, 
one of our goalkeepers um, had to put her on the field. And, uh, uh, she did really well. A beautiful little flick header. Actually had a shot on goal once. It was, it was really cool to hear her teammates on the bench supporting her as she uh, went on and played her part. But we had a uh, Eclipse started to push players forward. Uh, we started to, you know, feel that tension of not wanting to give up a goal, the tying goal, and uh, good lesson for us as we were thrown into the fire in terms of how to defend a one-goal lead. And um, no matter how much we've talked about it and. and Especially when we get to a point uh, with seven, eight minutes left, we're trying to kill the game. What do we do, right? I mean, we've talked about it. The ball's got to get to the corner. We want to hold it. We want to just slow the pace of the game down. We don't have to go and sprint after every throw in or after every ball that goes out of play. Time's on our side, right? We had kids take shots and then just when they, they didn't, they didn't need to. So talked about that after the game. Um, but Eclipse's throwing numbers forward uh, allowed us to go get some chances of our own. And um, PK, who was uh, playing our point forward, battled for a ball that Kenny had uh, kind of just lobbed into the danger area. and beat the defender of the ball, got the ball settled, and then slotted on a uh, breakaway to give us, give us that cushion that we, that we needed. The girls are super excited after the game. It was just fun to see and, and just so good for us early in our season to, to come up with a big win, a big win for us. For me as a coach, just good for me as well to, to really see how we performed and how certain players performed under in certain positions and under the under the stress of the top level ECNL competition. Good to see things that we can continue to work on and to see things that we need to continue to work on. And good for the team to under just to understand and believe in the coach. Understanding the importance of set pieces and all the dry, boring work that we have to put in um, to get organized on those set pieces. We defended really well, and Eclipse was dangerous on their corner kicks. Um, we get our first goal off a, off a corner kick. The weeks of time that I put into this in advance of this game, just really trying to think of what's the best lineup and subbing pattern to, to really make the best use of our depth. Um, and my constant assertion to the team that our depth is key and would see us through a game like this. And just to see it happen right in front of the girls' eyes. It's great for their belief and them putting faith into what I'm doing with them. Yeah. Super excited for how the girls fought and performed and feel they deserved the result today. Uh, feel that sends a message to the, to the rest of the conference. whether they knew it or not, that, that we're a force to be reckoned with this year. Uh, two weeks, we have a showcase in Indiana. We'll play Ohio Premier, Ohio Elite, and Cleveland Force, all ranked two or three in their uh, respective conferences. But the showcase results don't, as far as I know, and I'm gonna have to clarify this, but don't impact our Champions League qualification. And with that being said, it'll give me an opportunity to look at 
trying out different formations, trying kids in different roles, giving giving kids an opportunity to play in different roles in competitive environments and competitive events. And then we'll have a month and a half of no no competitive games and then we finish up this calendar year down in St. Louis first weekend of December. That's about it for now.